This week on Crossfeed, Vermont and religious license plates. Druids gain recognition. Can the Supreme Court silence Fred Phelps? Can anyone silence Fred Phelps? Offensive Jesus artwork. And did Jesus die for President Obama? Hello, everyone. Welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. And I am Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts. And it's good to be gathered and be back with you guys, folks. Um, we're here this week, and then next week we have to take off because I won't be here next week. Uh, I will be off for a week, and then we will be back with a special... Halloween Reformation Day episode. Don't know if we're going to do anything special for it or not, but uh, it'll be uh, really cool. By the way, by the way, uh, uh, um, I didn't put this up on our, our, our webpage yet, but I, I should submit it. There is an awesome, I mean awesome Martin Luther video to the tune of Manic Monday <laughs> that you've got, got to see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Done by these three history teachers. And I mean, they do all kinds of great stuff. They have a song about Charlemagne to the two Blondies, Call Me. Uh, they have a um, um, song about uh, St. Thomas Aquinas done to, to Venus. Just, uh, that's You know, that's awesome. I've been wanting to do a Martin Luther thing ever since um, watching Animaniacs and the, um, the Ballad of Magellan. I'm like, oh, you got to do something like that with Martin Luther. So I'm glad that somebody's actually done it. Now, but what we should really do is do a... Um, thing of theological terminology to whatever tune it is Wacko Warner uses for the nations of the world. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's see. You, you, you're dealing with two overgrown kids here. <laughs> I might be 10 years older, but I watch the same stuff all the time. Um, but what if, what if we did something like that and tick Vermont off? Ooh. Wow. Hey, this 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 story was given to us by our buddy Dave down yep. in Virginia, and uh, it's funny because I live in Massachusetts and I didn't hear anything about the story. Uh, <laughs> but Massachusetts, now Vermont, you have to understand, is the most unchurched nation in the country. State, I mean state, state <laughs> in the country. Like you know, in the way it's its own little country up there. It really <laughs> is. It's, it's it's extremely liberal and extremely secular. And what planet they were on when they came up with this rule, I don't know. All right. So we've got um, we have a guy by the name of um, uh, Sean Byrne. And um, he, his, he wanted to get a vanity license plate. Okay. And um, it, it, the state rejected it. They said he couldn't use it because it was JN36TN. John. Three six teen. All right, and uh, say they rejected it because it addressed areas of otherwise permissible expression from a religious perspective. This the state cannot do. Oh wait, that's why they rejected it, and yeah. and the court said, okay. Now, now it's interesting because Vermont said if that meant John, I'm age 36 from Tennessee, that would have been okay. This is madness. Yeah. So it says uh, Vermont can uh, – court emphasized ruling was limited to the state's ban on religious messages where the Supreme Court has been extensive and clear in its guidance. As a result, Vermont can keep its ban on vanity plates – they refer to scatological subjects, genitalia, illicit drugs, racial epithets, and other objectionable material. But um, the appeals court noted the state's rules against religious expression on vanity plates has sometimes been unevenly applied. For instance, it said Genesis can appear on license plates as long as the driver insists it's a reference to a rock group rather than the Old Testament. I'm thinking, or a, a reference to um, uh, Star Trek. Um, <laughs> and so since he, but the, one, the reference to Star Trek was a real, technically a biblical reference. Yeah, so, it was. Uh, yeah, who knows? Anyway, I mean, okay. I, I don't know about you. Now, I, I, uh, uh, we got this thing, and I'm looking. I said, 
see John 3.16, JN 3.16. And my first thought was, what's that have to do with the Bible? Now, I don't know, but if I see JN, TN, 3.6 in the middle, I'm thinking John and Terry Nazgul got married on March the 6th. Or, yeah. Yeah, because the, you know? the I mean, N is the as the second letter on both sides. Yeah. It looks like initials. Yeah. I, mean, I thought they were initials and, you know, I would have thought they were initials and a, I mean, you know, when will this insanity end? So it, it was just, I don't know. I, I, the weird thing is, is that an, did, did the first court to hear this, a federal court uh, agreed with Vermont. Mm. Um, and then it was reversed, reversed by the second uh, court of appeals. On what planet? I mean, how can you? This is this is obviously First Amendment, right? Right. Okay. So here's this seems to be the 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 um the misunderstanding. Okay. Now we talked about the like choose life um, plates, and there was in Florida there was a sort of proposed Christian um, license plate and stuff like that, where. It wasn't like the vanity plate, but it was actually like one of the choices instead of like a natural resources thing or something like that. Um, it was instead it was it was actually like you could go out and get a Christian plate with just a without a, a, a vanity message. That was actually the design of the plate. OK. And that was unconstitutional and agreed. OK. Because it it, it upholds a, a particular um, religious belief. And, and in that sense, the. <clears throat> Or, you know, and even the, the pro-life ones I can understand. Um, because it's, it's, it's supporting one particular viewpoint. Okay. And by the state having license plates that, that promote that one particular viewpoint, the state is taking a position on that. Okay. In this case, if you see a license plate, um, then, you know, and, and it's got a vanity message on it, you know that that message is coming from the person who owns that car not fr from the state uh, even there even i'm gonna, I'm gonna even, i would even go so far as to say like um, the uh choose life plates and things like that because i'm spending that extra money and you know it's going to whatever i mean out here you can get one that you know with the uh basketball hall of fame or with the red sox or with the Patriots, or with, you know, all kinds of things. And I think we do. I think they finally voted through a, a, a Choose Life one. Um, they don't have one that says bad Patriots. You know, there's no, you know, anti red you know, Yankees license plate. You're not going to see one in Massachusetts either. Uh, there's not even a Kansas City Royals one. You know, I mean, you know, so it's not like they, you know, they, they even there, they, they, it's not like they give you a choice of whatever you want to do. It's not like a major league baseball plate. It's, you know, strictly with, you know, one, you know, one particular group. And if you don't want to support that group, you don't get to support any others. Um, but this, I mean, this is a vanity plate that is not, you know, even if it said John 316, it's not a. Um, Danger is my middle name. It's, it's, it's one person and something that's important to him. Right. I mean, it, there's nothing objectionable there. Right. And it's not even, you know, it, it's not even like, it's not even quoting it. No. <laughs> Just a reference. I mean, I, I guess my question is, you know, would they have objected if it said Wiccan on the back of it? Presumably. Uh, if, I know? mean, if they're going to be consistent. Well, you know how often that happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, true. Okay. But, okay. So here's a go. What if it said Jew? Cuff them, boys. Because that could be cultural or it could be religious. They'd have to ask the person. I don't know. It I was, mean, uh, fortunately, the thing is, is who cares what the person wants it to mean? The question is, what is the average driver going down the street going to see it as? Mm -hmm. You know? Because there have been a few, I remember seeing one, I can't remember what it was now. But it actually managed to slip by the sensors, and then, like later on, they contacted the guy and said, "No, we're gonna have to take this back," because it was, 
it was just like a number or something like that. But when you looked at it in the mirror, it formed an, a, a word that really, and I don't even remember what it was anymore, but it formed a word that, that didn't belong on a license plate. And so you'd only notice it if the guy was coming up behind you and you see it in your mirror and you go, what? <laughs> but that's how it managed to slip past the sensors, you know? So, but yeah, I mean, yeah, there's definitely things that don't belong on, on license plates. All right. But a person expressing, you know, makes some sort of, of religious expression. It's not like he's like bashing other religions or, you know, like, okay, what if it said Darwin? You know, um, that's six letters. You can do that. Um, you know, that would, that would offend a certain, um, religious perspectives. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, I, I'm sure you could. Yankees, have... that would, that would offend a certain religious perspective up here. You know, <laughs> the Red Sox worshippers. So, <laughs> I don't know. But like I said, Vermont is an extremely secular state, and, you know, it's just kind of goofy up there, and I just really, that just amazes me um, that they would try such a thing, because uh, it goes back to that basic First Amendment, um, freedom of religion, freedom of expression within okay. you know, certain right. bounds. Here's one for you. What if it said no God? You're crazy. Would that be... All right, the be an atheist perspective, but at the same time, it's challenging... Other perspectives. Now, I suppose, in a sense, John three sixteen does too. Not that he's actually quoting it, but I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it wouldn't bother me any. I yeah, it, and me either. I mean, it would certainly generate some some discussion. You know, I imagine there'd be people that would be walking up to him and talking to him. You know, so um, well, as long as we're on topics of offensive. Free speech. We might as well cover a couple other topics here that have that same thing in common. All right. So, uh, should we do the Kansas idiot or the Colorado idiot? Oh well, let's go to the supreme um, free speech idiot. Let's talk. Yeah, about what we powers. had that, that we just had a court case, so let's deal with another court case. All right. All right. No, first okay. of all, I, I, I was I was really on the fence with this one because we said that we would not cover. Fred Phelps and the Westboro Baptist Church anymore because we didn't want to give them any, what they're looking for is publicity and that's what we were giving them. So we stopped talking about them because we didn't want to, you know, give them what they wanted. At the same time, this is a little different because now what we're really talking about is the Supreme Court, um, and, and free speech. And it's not just like sort of look at the goofball. All right. Now this is this could have really huge repercussions. I know how I, I oh gosh, I, I I've kind of looked at this thing a whole bunch of different ways. Um understand I, you know, am the father of a you know, a former soldier now who was in Iraq for 15 months. And you know, Josh and I had some conversations before he left. You know, who, you know, about, you know, funeral arrangements. If you died, who would you want to preach? Where would you want the funeral? Yeah, there, there are some serious questions I asked them. I said, because I don't have to make those decisions. Wow. You know, you know I yeah, mean. That's uh, something you want to talk about with your kid? You know, so I just said, you know, I, I need to have you, you know, I said, if something happens to you. And, uh, and by the way, the life insurance money, we'll use it to put a new bathroom in the house. So. <laughs> We'll put a black. We'll put a brass plaque there at the Josh Bath Butler Memorial Bathroom. You know, I'm you know. sure you'd appreciate that. <laughs> well, are you dealing with a a, a a heavy topic? You know, a little dark humor helps lighten up the subject. You know, and we would tell them, "Be careful over there. We don't need the bathroom that badly." And so, you know, it would be our way of just trying to keep the you know deal with it in, in our you know very unique way. So I put myself in the place of this father. Now, here you are, your, you know, your son died in uh, either Iraq or Afghanistan. I'm not sure which one this guy died in. Um, and as, you know, there's the funeral procession and at, I think at the graveside, 
you know, these guys are holding up banners and signs that says you're going to hell. God hates the USA. Thank God for 9-11. Thank God for dead soldiers. There's someone in my head, but it's not me. <clears throat> it said the, the protest was so venomous that the route of the funeral procession had to be altered. So apparently it wasn't at the gravesite. Um, okay. Someone nearby. And then um, weeks after the funeral, when the dad, Mr. Schneider, was looking online for tributes made for his son, he found a poem on the church's website that attacked Mr. Schneider and his ex-wife for the way they brought up Matthew, their son. We don't have any Who as far as we know was Matthew gay. Our... Yeah. You know, he, he was, he was you just know, a soldier. He was, he was a soldier. His country. And... Don't lecture me about war. You know, he, the father then sued. Um, he was awarded five million dollars by one court. Uh, the next court, it was appealed by the church. And interesting enough, Fred Phelps' daughter, I think, was the, was the lawyer who's argued the case for her father all the way up so far. And, um, Oh, it was originally one eleven million dollars. Yeah, was he was ordered by the by the uh, uh, by the jury? A ju- the judge reduced it to five million, and the federal appeals court in Richmond, Virginia, threw out the verdict, saying, "Sorry, it's hateful, it's venomous, but it's also the First Amendment, and that shields the the um, uh, the, the church." And so now it's in the Supreme Court's hands. Right. Now, this is just a crazy difficult thing to deal with, all right? <clears throat> because on the one hand, free speech and, you know, and in this case, it's also a, a religious perspective, all right? So it's it's freedom of religion as well, okay? And And so, you know, the First Amendment definitely comes into play here. But at the same time, it's not just that they're exercising their first amendment rights. They are getting in people's faces. They are, you know, my understanding of the, of the concept of free speech is that so insofar as it does not infringe on somebody else's rights. Right. And in this case, they are silencing the message of that funeral by you know, where it gets to the point, you can't hear the the pastor. You can't. You're not able to, you know, to sort of meditate on on what's been said and the 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 point of the funeral and you know all that kind of thing because you've got this, you know, this thing going on around you, right? And <clears throat> so, at one point, can one person's right to free speech obstruct? somebody else's right to live in peace. If they are being, um, I'd say, making noise, yelling, screaming, um, especially at the the gravesite or something else, something like that, uh, they certainly have no right to do it because um, at that time, you know, the the, the grave, regardless of anything else, uh, um, grave. You know, cemeteries are, par- are private property because you buy you buy the plot. Mm-hmm. It is owned by a corporation, and the corporation has every right to tell the uh, the party you cannot come here. Yeah, but I, my understanding was that they were sort of not on the property, which would be why they yeah. had to redirect the procession. So they were on public uh, property. But uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I I, I like the way that, that the guy words this. You know, this is an only in America quandary. <laughs> yeah, whether the freedom of speech is so powerfully woven in the nation's fabric that it protects one's family right to violent, hurtful protest at the very moment of another family's profound grief, or at the very moment you're burying somebody who died that they might have the right to do this. Yeah. And died that others might have the right to do something. You know, it's. <sighs> Iraq, by the way, um, you know, Iraq thing, but you know, he says this isn't a case of free speech; it's a case of harassment, right? 
and, and I'm I just you know there, there, there's part of me that says you know believe me part of me says 11 million isn't enough mm-hmm. you know take the guy for every penny he's got leave him destitute this guy's not doing anybody any favors although I do appreciate the fact that consistently now the news media points out this is a tiny church and it's mostly his relatives. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a general understanding this is he does not speak for the, the, you know, evangelical Christianity in general in any way, shape or form. At the same time, I worry that if you, you know, I worry about unintended consequences. And if the Supreme Court were to rule in his favor, a rule in, in the favor of the father here, a rule against him. Then at what point does, um, you know, uh, uh, someone, um, then, you know, take out, try to sue a church because I find their message of homosexuality, which they have on a sign outside or something like that, to be very offensive. Mm-hmm. And, you know, use this case then to develop that. Right. Uh, I mean, and that's one of the problems we have. You know, we uh, 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 we always have to remember that, you know, prohibition gave birth to NASCAR and Roe v. Wade. <laughs> <laughs> NASCAR because of the rum runners and Roe v. Wade because at the end of prohibition, one of the, one of the whole attitudes was leave me alone. I have a right to do what I want. It's my own house, my own life, my own body. I have a right to privacy, which was the very the foundings of Griswold and then Roe v. Wade. You know, so you got to be careful of unintended consequences. Right. You know, uh, and I'm just trying to figure out how, you know, um, you know, the courts have found that a strip club club is free speech. Burning on the flat, burning a flag is free speech. I just don't understand how they can not rule that this comes under the idea of free speech. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, they need to make a point of, of, Saying this isn't a free speech issue, I really think this is a harassment issue. You know that you have the right to to protest or you know say whatever you want, okay. But at the same time, there are there are boundaries to that of where you can do it and in what context you can do it. You know, it's, it's sort but of the moment you start talking that uh, we've got all party problems with colleges. Setting up free speech zones, you could you, you you have your boundary for your free speech. Here it is. Yeah, I know, I know. Unfortunately, you can't make this guy. He's an idiot. Okay, I mean, he really he's stupid. Yes, you're absolutely right. There are boundaries. It's called common courtesy. It's called common sense. Right, but there's yeah, already I'm, boundaries. Have any of that. You you can't shout fire in a crowded theater. Right, but that's because you may cause danger to people. But you can't shout fire in a crowded theater if there's really a fire. Yeah. So, <laughs> but um, but you know, there's all right. You can't, you can't call me on the. All right, I'll give you an example. Um, had a, a situation where a woman, um, when I was in Iowa, was was accused of of embezzling some money. Okay, her eighty year old mother was getting. Um, harassing phone calls saying when, you know, your daughter's horrible, yada, yada, and just, you know, making threats and all kinds of things. Okay. So even if, I mean, and threats are inherently illegal. Okay. But, um, but these harassing phone calls, all right, that's harassment. Okay. And, um, you know, she has a right to be able to answer her phone without fear. But okay. you're not answering phone that you're, you're standing on. These people are standing on a public street corner yelling their hateful things. And if if the same motorcade had been going by and they had been burning a flag. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, no. That and yeah, I well, I mean, I definitely think that the poem on their website there you might be able to, because there you're, you're getting close to libel. You did a bad job raising your kid, yada, yada, yada. There, there you, you know. Uh, yeah, that's, you, that's a lot I, of opinion, though, so. depending on the, I'm not even go to going to go to the church website to see what the actual poem was. As long as it's all opinion, then you're, you're okay. 
And, and in fact, I would say you, as, as long as they did stick with opinion, then, um, you probably can't use that just because we're not, you know, sticking this in your face. You came to our website, you know, to read this. We didn't, it's not, you know, we didn't call you up and recite it to you over the phone or something like that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's debatable if they, if, if it was, if they had written it and like mailed it to the family, that could be right. considered harassment. Um, I don't think having it on the website, as long as they stick with opinion, I don't think that, you know, that they could do anything about it. But, you know, the big thing is they're, <clears throat> What Westboro Baptist Church is doing, what Fred Phelps and his clan um, are doing, is the, the the very thing that they're using, you know, the First Amendment, they are in danger of destroying it. Mm -hmm. Right? They are, because they are pushing it so hard and so far, you know, all the other Christians are going... Knock it off. Go away. We sort of like our free speech, and we don't want you messing with it. Right. We like our Jesus, too. <laughs> um. Well, you know, and that's the problem. I mean, and, and you know, and he, he's being stupid. There's no questions about that. He's absolutely vile. He's absolutely wrong. Unfortunately, as... Anybody who's watched this before knows I tend to be a bit of a free speech absolutist um, because, you know, just because I'm always afraid if you start limiting one thing, you know, you can start limiting others. Um, you know, unfortunately, you can't teach this guy good manners. No. And, you know, anybody who thinks you can get somebody to listen to you by doing something like this. Instead of being, you know, unless it's your own little fringe people, you know, you're, you're, you're just, you're closing doors and nobody's going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's deal with the Colorado idiot. Okay. I, I tried to find a copy of this, um, of this artwork and I couldn't find it. I wasn't entirely sure that I wanted to see it. There is a link to it. Oh, before I go any further, I should tell you what I'm talking about. All right, there's an um, artist who has a, an article call or a, a piece of artwork called The Misadventures of the, Rom of the Romantic Cannibals um, by uh, <clears throat> Enrique Chagoya, professor of Stanford University. <sighs> um, they. I got a bad feeling about this. There was big protests about it uh, because it are in Loveland, Colorado. Yep, um, they claim that uh, it depicts part of it. Um, it's a it's a series of images, and a part of it depicts Jesus in a sex act. Um, the there's a link to the picture, but the picture shows it damaged because somebody um, vandalized it. And so you can't actually see the real thing anymore unless you order uh, um, a, cop, a lithograph of it. And heck, if I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, so there's sort of now there's sort of two issues involved here. Um, the question of in a public gallery um, whether this sort of um, sort of thing should be on display. Uh, if you follow the link, it says that it that it did not depict that. But since we can't, I can't find a copy of it anywhere. Um, there's no way of knowing. Um, I can't imagine that people would have been that upset about it that they actually it says. Um, it 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 says that they were protesting it because it um, because of this claim, which was a false claim, and yet um, the person that actually destroyed it, I can't imagine that you know, them looking right at it and that it would have gotten, wouldn't have gotten the protests if it didn't actually depict that. Now, granted, sometimes, um, 
people misinterpret things. Uh, you know, like for instance, I learned this past week that the song Let It Be is not about marijuana. <laughs> it's actually about Paul McCartney's mother, Mary. <laughs> I'd always heard that Mary was a, you know, short for Mary Jane marijuana. Just like Lucy in the Sky no. with Diamonds is not about LSD. It's it's actually a, about a picture that Julian drew. All right. So, you interpretation. Are. Okay, I'm, I'm scared, man. You're, mm, okay. Yeah, I, the Beatles were on a lot of drugs at that time. Okay. Well, yeah, that's how else you understand the song because, you know, I mean, you know, that's... um. <laughs> I believe that probably sounds a lot better. Yeah. Let's Listen move to the on song here. Sometime and think anyway, about a person uh, who's on marijuana, all mellow and everything, and tell me that that wouldn't resonate with them. I no, I have no experience. I'm glad you do. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, moving on here, back to this. You know, once again, somebody gave my favorite thing of saying, um, you know, hey, look. If you're going to do, why don't you put Muhammad up there and see what happens? You know, I mean, big, you know, he, he can, you know, he doesn't deny it's Jesus at any rate. And, you know, but I, I'm sure this is big guy. I'm a, I'm a cool hip uh, college prof. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, take these know nothing Christians and I'm going to put them down. I'm going to insult them. I'm going to, I'm going to make myself feel good by this. I, I, you know, I I know the type. They run around up. They run around Harvard and B and 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 some of the other schools up here. Um, you know, um, all the time. And you know, this is my way. And fine, put Muhammad up there. Show show yourself to really be brave. Uh, you know, and see how quickly they pull it down, like the Washington Post did when they have a Where's Waldo? If Where's Muhammad? Muhammad's nowhere on the thing. I mean, you know, um, <laughs> you can show show that. But being as as it may. It's offensive, it's stupid, it's also under the First Amendment. Okay, but free speech is one thing. I'm not saying he doesn't have the right to do it. The question is, is the um, is the city art uh, museum obligated to display it? Absolutely not. Right. And so that's the real question. And, you know, and there's this whole thing about, um, you know, the, they're showing pictures of people said, with protest signs saying pornography is not art. Okay. Um, and okay. The, that raises, uh, two things you talk about our definition of art, which I'll address in a second. Um, but the other thing is the, um, I really think that the protests that they'd be better off not process protesting it because that just, then people go, Oh, what is it? What, you know, what's this all about? Right. I don't know. I might want to sit back and say, no, I consider this extremely offensive. I'm just going to let people know I consider it extremely offensive. All right. This uh, is, um, <clears throat> I was listening to Ravi Zacharias, and he was talking about the difference between pornography and art. And I thought he had a really good point. Or he says, you know, you take a, a, um, a glass of, he says, I, I was at a restaurant and I had a glass of milk and I said, um, you know, I, I drank the glass and it was really good. And I commented to the waiter, what a, just a, a, a refreshing, wonderful glass of milk it was. And what a, what a great thing it was. And he says, you know, all that is, is an excretion from a cow. Um, it's, you know, the, it, it could, it might as well be, um, urine. It's still just an excretion from a cow. And, and he said, the difference is, and, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to quote him properly but um the difference is the purpose of it one is meant for nourishment and one is waste it's garbage All right and so the same thing with art the purpose of art is to nourish our minds All right um <clears throat> and it's you know to sort of to nourish the right brain ultimately all right. So is does this sort of thing which is basically just visual name calling. All right? Is that art? No. All right? It's you know, it's a it's a visual potty mouth. 
and that's all it is. This, this is nothing intellectual. No. Does does he have if if they if the art museum wants to display it, do they have the right to? Yeah. All right, free speech. All right. Can the people of the city protest and and call for um call for the uh, a better a more um a more discerning uh, director of the art museum or whoever makes these decisions about what's going to be displayed and what's not. Yeah. They can call for that and say, Mm -hmm. you know, we would like somebody that is going to better reflect what we're looking for in an art museum. It it's, it's goes back to that fame, that, that wonderful Jurassic park quote, Mm -hmm. just because you can do something. Does it mean we should? And it's the same thing. This and this and Fred Phelps. It's the same. Th- it's just two co- sides of the same coin. We have the right to do it. We, you know, does that mean you really should do it? Yeah. You know, right. What? What? What are you? What? What did you just contribute to your to 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 Loveland, Colorado, by this? Well, it's like you know, St. Paul what, said: all things are permitted, but not all things are beneficial. Right. I mean, you know, what did you? What did you just contribute to it? You know, but. But once again, you know, being a bit of a, a you know, an, a, an absolutist, you know, I'm, you know, but yeah, the, the, but I don't, but I think they, sh- you know, but the town, I think that the drawed local director should have showed more, a little bit more discernment and, um, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, saying, okay, is this something that really, you know, what's this going to do to the majority of this community? The people here in Buffalo, Colorado. So. All right. Well, Britain or DC? Well, as long as we're talking about Jesus, let's continue talking about Jesus. Let's, let's, this is a this is a little bit more positive story, you know. Yesterday, I uh, you know I, I was teaching my uh, online class, and we started talking off about sin and death and everything, and we we, we went on this all this stuff for about two hours. And, uh, or something like that. And I asked my class, I said, so is anybody else here getting very mega depressed besides me? <laughs> and they're all like, yeah. <laughs> so I said, good. Well, let's start talking about Jesus now. This would be a little bit more exciting and cheerful. And they're like, yeah, okay. So we had a good time talking about the gospel for a while. But man, we spent about two hours talking just to sin death. So, okay, we just talked about some really ugly stuff here. I thought, this story was pretty cool. Yeah, I think so, too. All right. President Obama's gotten all sorts of flack for because, while well, he doesn't go to church. Um, his rationale for that is that, uh, you know, he doesn't, when he goes to church, he doesn't want it to be about him. All right. So, fair enough. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but he's also been accused of being Muslim, um, which is just goofy if you remember back ago? to the election. All right. Where... That's his church and, you know, his Christian church was causing all sorts of problems for him. It would have been a lot easier for him to just denounce it. All right. Um, all right. But this is on Tuesday. <clears throat> um, let's see. This is dated October 3rd. So this is a while ago. This isn't all the recent. This is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Not all his recent trips to the Cleveland area. Man, he's here all the time. He's in Cleveland. Oh, really? He just came to. He, he's just, 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 just. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll work the same magic that he did for Scott Brown and, I mean, for Marsha Coakley up here. <laughs> Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Anyway, um, but um, he, um, he was up here this weekend to, uh, 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 um, playing for uh, uh, did uh, Deval Patrick. He, he didn't talk about his, his Christian faith. Thirty thousand dollar draperies, though, or anything. Oh. You know, I'm not, I think, you know, I didn't talk about the important things up here. But anyway... So anyway, um, back to Albuquerque. Yeah, back to Albuquerque. All right. Um, I wonder if she met Bugs Bunny while he's there, because he's always taking that left turn in Albuquerque. No, he always anyway. misses the left turn. <laughs> Should have taken that left turn. <laughs> Should have taken that left turn. Okay. So um, he was he was talking to a crowd, and he said, we are sinful and flawed, but have salvation through Christ. Um, here's a the exact quote. <clears throat> I'm a Christian by choice. The precepts of Jesus Christ spoke to me in terms of the kind of life I'd want to lead. Also, understanding that Jesus Christ dying for my sins spoke to the humility we all have to have as human beings. We're sinful and we're flawed and we make mistakes. 
we achieve salvation through the grace of God. Right? Because he was somebody asked him about his beliefs. Right? Boy, that seems pretty clear to me. It's not just you know some of them they say they're they're Christian, but like when they talk about it, it's all works, works, works. That I just try to you know live a good life and stuff. But boy, he talks about we're sinful, we make mistakes. I'm saved through the grace of God. Jesus died for my sins. He's got to figure it out. Very short, very succinct, very plain. Um, you know, and I, I, you know, and I just I found that to be very true, very, very nice to see. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess I disagree with everybody. You know, getting all upset about him not showing up in church. Come on, seriously. Um, I, I just ima- try to imagine um, security issues for a church. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, you'd have okay. to have every member would have to be run through the FBI. You'd have to have metal detectors where people walk in. I'm sure. I mean, I, I'm. You know, I, I worked in this uh, hotel. Uh, back when Reagan was running for uh, running for, running for president, this is before he was even elected. He was still, you know, he was candidate, and um, he they 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 he slept in that hotel at this motel where I was working, and um, I, it was before I was there. But everybody was telling me they all had turned their social security numbers in. They all had to fill out these 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 forms. Everybody had to be run through the Secret Service. Some people were told these these people are for whatever re- you know they have a criminal record. They can't be here. You know, mm-hmm. I'm sure it would be you know just that bad, if not worse, for a church. Plus, you have all the uh, uh, media cameras outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the presidents tend to go to the same church. It's probably the one that that has it, um, you know, kind of set up, and they're ready for it, and everything's been there, done that. But it, I mean, you know, the other thing you have to keep in mind is that the president has all kinds of advisors, including pastors. So he's got pastors coming to him, you know, Bible study and all that kind of stuff all the time, you know, on a very regular basis, at, at least once a week. So, so, you know, I, I mean, yeah, he's, he, he, he's United Church of Christ. Okay. He's, he's in a different place than I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, although a sliver of the United Church of Christ actually, uh, uh, had a, uh, Lutheran background and actually considered the Og, and so the UCC considers the Augsburg Confession one of its confessional documents. <laughs> well, I have heard of, there was, uh, Oh, it was a number of years ago now, but I remember a church leaving the UCC and joining the Missouri Senate. So, hmm, haven't heard about that. But anyway, mm-hmm. be all that as it may. But so, I mean, you know, I just, you know, I just think this is a very nice way of saying it. Just for, for a short, very succinct. Um, and I'm sure he means it. Now, there was this sort of weird thing at the end where he said America is predominantly Christian nation, but said Jews, Muslims, Hindus, atheists, agnostics, and Buddhists all have their own path to grace. I'm not sure what he meant by that. Well, that, and that's not a direct quote. That's right. a summarization by the, the reporter, so we don't know exactly what he said. Um, I mean, and again, he's, he's, not, he's not a theologian. Right. He's, he, he is, you know, a community organizer and, you know, and a lawyer. Um, now, if I'm a um, politician, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I mean, even, even if I'm a, a, a Lutheran politician, you know, I'll say this, this here, here, I'm, I'm going by Jesus. Um, they all have their own path. I'm going to leave it go with that. I mean, you know, because, you, you, you know, this is about where I am. You know, it's not where I'm not talking where anybody else is. Right. Um, and yeah, I, mean, I still want all these people to vote for me. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be interesting to see, you know, what the actual quote was. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, you look at President Bush made statements like on several occasions that talked about um, different religions having their own path to God and or 
we worship the same God or something like that. I mean, there were several times where it just kind of went, ah, what do you, <laughs> why did you even go down that path? But it was, you know, it was sort of to, to avoid, you know, what he was trying to do. And, and what I'm sure that this, the same idea here is that I'm president, not just to the Christians. I'm president to everybody else too. You know, and right. Every, they're all, we're all Americans. Right. And that's his point. And, you know, I understand that. And this was a casual thing. Yeah. It wasn't scripted and, and that. So I, I, but I thought the fact that, that he was, that he was willing to, to articulate the Christian faith, you know, and express his, his belief in Jesus dying for his sins. I, I think it's great. <laughs> okay. Speaking about things you believe, <laughs> I, 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 I like ending on this this story. Uh, I don't know what else you can say. Britain recognizes Druidry as religion for the first time and gives it a charitable status. We have clearance, Clarence. So, you know, this is one of those, um, one of those kind of things that, um, that is different in, in Britain than it is in America because you don't need to have, uh, you know, anybody that wants to start up a church can start up a church and get nonprofit status. Uh, in Britain, it's apparently a little tougher. Now watch what you say. Cause we already talk about British fringe religions. We've already offended the Jedi and had to apologize to them. All right. So, um, and Druids have been around a bit longer. And uh says there is um Britain rec- recognized I, I didn't know I, I thought it was Druidism, but anyway, in ancient belief the worships deities that take different forms in nature as a religion for the first time gave it charitable status. There's sufficient belief in a supreme being or entity to constitute a religion for the purposes of charity law. God help us. So I no. I don't know that they really believe in, and and I I guess I'm not like real. <laughs> I I don't know a whole lot about about druids. All right. Um, well, I, the, the British Commission also noted that druidry is an, animistic and based on a belief that everything has a spiritual dimension. Right. It also says religion recognizes deities within nature and conducts worship ceremonies. Yeah, it's it's more of a sort of pantheism. Right. It's a it's a pantheistic thing. Again, it's not a very big group. So it only has about 350 people. Which is that that kind of shocked me. I I figured it'd be bigger than that. But then again, England's not that big. So, yeah. Well, yeah. it could be that many who who are official druids, you know. Yeah. What I found weird about this article and I read it two or three times, but it starts off talking about the Druids. And then the last half of the article talks all about neo-paganism in America. <laughs> you know, and, you know, some other kind of forget that. And then he starts talking about, you know, Satanism. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, he goes, kind of, it's not a real focused article. It kind of goes all over the place. <laughs> had a minimum anyway, count. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I guess, but, uh, uh, um, so, uh, yeah, it's just kind of strange. Um, but anyhow, uh, one guy who apparently is a professor of religious studies, but apparently he's kind of a neo pagan himself says, you know, no, I guess not. I'm not sure. Says, you know, uh, 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 one of the key things is that, uh, you know, druids and other neo pagans see themselves as part of a living system. Um, and, uh, um, uh, and, oh, and, uh, within, uh, uh, within Druidry, it is confused by historical accounts of the killing of both human and animal victims for sacrifices. No such practice is deemed acceptable within modern Druidry. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad they got rid of the human sacrifices. <laughs> what is sacrificed within the tradition today is that which we value most highly in life and hold on to with the most passion, time, security, certainty, comfort, 
convenience, ignorance, and the like. I have no idea what that meant. So, and it's not Satanism because they don't believe in Satan. It's more the, the and, spirits in the trees and and the rocks and you know, it's like a uh, you know go uh, go watch um, um, Disney's Pocahontas. You know the the rocks or the you know are my brothers and all that kind of stuff. Or the or or the, or the new 3D Pocahontas that was called Avatar. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I watched that. I watched about the first half of that movie. I thought I liked it better with Grandma Willow. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> well. It, it it sort of still works, but it was. Um, I liked it better with Tone Loke. Um, when it was called uh, Fern Gully. Oh, I met Tone Loke. Really? I shook his hand. Huh. I had no idea who he was. Wait. In Denver? Yeah. Yeah, we were stayed the elevator. in the same hotel as us. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. I rode up the elevator with him and uh, was talking to him and shook hands with him and stuff and got off the elevator and my, one of my kids looks at me and, yeah, yeah, I was at the, whatever it was, in the tech center. And this girl, her mouth drops open, puts her hand over her mouth and, do you know who that was? Not a clue. Had no clue. At all. I think he must have found it very funny to have this guy, you know, because I was in my mid twenties at the time. I was uh, twenty-seven, uh, I think. Yeah, because I was uh, in high school. Yeah, I had no clue. Anyway, yeah. Millie Vanilli you. was there too. That that dates that event. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, Millie Vanilli was there, uh, and Millie Vanilli had this awful habit. One of them of coming down just before the buses came in, just so his bodyguard could tell the kids to leave him alone. <laughs> true, true. I was told that by the concierge. Because I was asking, why, why is he there? Because, you know, all the kids are coming down. He goes, are you kidding? He comes down to see what time you're supposed to come back. And he comes down there five minutes before. <laughs> Just, well, I learned a lot that way, kid. Anyway, back to this. Um, you know, uh, 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 I, I like the fact that uh, modern pagans may not be as restrictive on issues such as sex as other religions, but you've got to bring their kids to. But you got to bring their kids to the events. <laughs> so, so no pagan orgies. Um, I, I like this other guy. I like this on this last comment. Uh, this this professor of religion named Cow, last name Cowan. That it's not clear if the growth of Jewry, which he calls nowhere as near as influential the rapid growth of Christian Pentecostalism and Islam, is the <laughs> well, you got three hundred people, three hundred fifty followers. I don't think it is nearly as big as Pentecostalism or Islam, considering it's only <laughs> God's largest, you know, the Christian denomination in America right now. I think it's the, the largest, yeah, um, exactly. and spread over to every mainstream religion, mainstream Christian religion. Um, so I uh, that was kind of crazy. The the largest one is Church of God, hmm. which is isn't that a Pentecostal denomination? I, yeah, it is. Yeah, but uh, so, uh, somebody yeah. of God was taken off there for a while. It was huge, but I mean, it's, so a lot of this is just kind of a, a silliness, if you ask me. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of this this article is it's not very well done. I mean, you know, you, you've you've known neo pagans. I've known neo pagans. Mm -hmm. I think we have some, at least one watching this. So, well, maybe he's got a neo pagan you're watching, comment. Shout out! Yeah, let us know. Let us know what you think of your, the the recognition of the Druids. Hey, speaking of hearing, that that's by the way, a podcast at crossfeednews dot com, or if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you can um, comment there. Speaking of which, we got. Someone, I don't know who. I, I, now he, we've gotten comments from this guy before. No, we haven't. I think. First time commenter, long time watcher, first time commenter. Um, oh my I, goodness, he loved his comments. He the problem is you, he commented so well in so many areas. I don't even know where to begin. Yeah, yeah, because he actually went through, and I, I'm, I abbreviated his name um, H4B, okay, and um, or her, and. Uh, <clears throat> Since most of our viewers are male, I'm going to assume male. You can correct us if we're wrong. Um, so he actually went through, 
with like time markers where we'd say something or whatever and, and he'd mark the time when we said it so that we'd know what he was responding to. Um, which is, you know, helpful. Um, and, uh, so, all right, here's one of the questions that he asks. All right, what's the difference in standing up in one pulpit to voice how one should vote compared with the Mormon Church's smear campaign with ads to vote down Proposition 8 in California a while ago? No, we're not homosexual, but we are willing to learn. Yeah, you know, we talked about that this morning um, in my Bible class. We were talking about, you know, living in the two kingdoms and, uh, you know, and, and telling people how to vote. And, you know, and I use the example of something we talked about on here, um, where when, uh, South Dakota, uh, passed a law outlawing abortions. And Jim said, I wouldn't be in favor of that law because it's a waste of money because it's just going to get shot down right away, you know? And so, do you, as a Christian, if you believe that abortion is murder, do you, um, are you obligated to, to be in favor of this law? Um, not necessarily, because if you disagree with the implementation of it, um, you know, and that's that's why we don't support, you know, uh, why we can't tell people how to vote, because, uh, you know, it all depends on the person's implementation, and, and implementation is opinion. You know, you can say, well, this is what the Bible says about, you know, for instance, homosexuality or marriage or whatever. But as far as how that should be implemented in, in our society, Bible silent on that. So Right. And again, we would we would argue that the world's gonna be the world. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh um you know, so I you know I, I don't know exactly what the Mormons did. I don't know if they put out, you know, a, just a lot actual... of ads saying, you know, vote for Proposition Eight. Um, right. but, uh, talking about homosexuality and this, this relates to, uh, one, uh, it's kind of what we talked about today with Phelps. Um, this is looking at Matthew Shepard, Dr. Tiller, right? Dr. Tiller was the abortion doctor who was killed. Mm-hmm. Um, Matthew Shepard is the dragging death. All right. How is best to deal with your, um, so-called fringe believers? Uh, sure doesn't seem like you folks are doing much to picket or corral them from lashing out like this, uh, through the centuries. Um, yeah, no, there's, you know, there's been plenty of, of Christians that have done all sorts of ridiculous things. And we speak out like, you know, like on this show. One of the reasons mm-hmm. that we are doing this show is to, when people do ridiculous things in the name of Christianity, that we can say, um, no, that's not what Jesus is about. Right. And there's no way, oh, okay, first off, I don't know about Matt, Matthew Shepard. You know, I don't know those two guys who killed him were necessarily Christian. Right. You know, um, matter of fact, is that if I recall correctly, uh, they had assaulted a lot of people who are not gay. Um, they are just, you know, but that's such a point. Um, but with, 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 with Dr. Tiller, you know, you, you can't stop the random element. You know, I mean, you, you, you can do everything you can to, to tell people. And, and Dale and I did. We talk about the, the two kingdoms. We talk about, Nobody has the right to bring the law into their own hands. You know, you have to let God do the judging. We have no right to do that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, you can't stop the random person who, you know, thinks they're God or think they have the right to do this or whatever. I mean, uh, you know, you talk about corralling them. How, how am I supposed to corral them? How am I supposed to find them? Right. You know, but, so you never you know, know the, until it, it happens. Right. Believe me, if I found out, if I had a member of my congregation and I found out this guy was, was, was contemplating the, the, uh, uh, somebody's murder, uh, no matter how offensive I found the other person. If I have had a member who, and I found out he was going to bomb a, an abortion clinic, even though the place was going to be empty in the middle of the night and nobody was going to be there, um, I would still do everything I can to, to dissuade him. If not, I would have him reported to have him arrested. Mm-hmm. Right. So, because, yeah, I mean, that's, that's okay. all there is to it. That's what, that's, you know, but you, but you can't stop what you don't know in advance. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, a lot of, just a lot of really great questions and comments here. He talks about private schools and all kinds of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so he says, well, long time listener, first time commenting. Um, you do, you two do fairly, fairly well given what you're working with. 
Thanks for giving a lonely soul in this world some views to think over. So that's why we're here. You know, we want to, we want you to think and, um, and respond. So really, really appreciate, uh, the comments. Just really good stuff. Yeah. Thank you. H4B. Really appreciate it. Uh, and then we had another comment too. Did we cover this one from, uh, John Paul 1011? Um, don't think so. Go ahead. I don't have it here. Uh, is he said, uh, uh, um, he viewed, uh, an episode from February 2009, uh, uh episode 117, Will It Blend, the Jesus edition. Um, doesn't say much about it. Other says, should watch our tags. So that, uh, oh, that you one, know, yeah. To, yeah. So, uh, well, there wasn't a whole lot of other stuff there. Hey, thank you all for watching so much. If you want to join H4B or other friend there, make different comments, send them to us. We love it. listener email. It's great stuff. Uh, in the meantime, we will be seeing you guys in a couple of weeks. And uh, hopefully then we can uh, reflect and rejoice in the joy of Reformation Day slash Halloween. Yeah. Oh, and I also just want to um, put in another plug for uh, the, our Genesis study, shepherdoftheridge.org. Um, we, we started it tonight. It's, it's recorded. It's there. You can go see it and, um, and, and we'll be doing it every week. Uh, well, with a, we'll be taking a couple of weeks off here or there, but, um, different things going on, but, um, it'll be a 24 week study. Um, and there's going to be lots of, uh, hopefully lots of online discussion and things like that. Um, I said some things tonight that were pretty controversial. And so, uh, I encourage you to go and check it out and, and offer your comments um, over there at shepherdtheridge.org uh, through the comments section there uh, or the I've got some forums set up and things like that. And so really would love to have uh, some – I've gotten comments through the years uh, from some of our listeners and viewers on this show um, about some of the topics like creation and evolution and things like that. Um, and had some great discussions with different people. So I uh, really encourage you to, to go and check that out. Uh, if you can't watch it live each week uh, at 7 Eastern, um, you can watch the recording. Um, for, I'm going to have it uh, available as a podcast and stuff like that too. So I um, encourage you to check that out. So, yep. so uh, remember, Genesis is okay if it's a rock band, but it's bad if it happens to people to the Bible. <laughs> Brought to you by the state of Vermont. <laughs> yeah, they seem to have a visible peace. touch. <laughs> God's peace, everyone. <laughs> Good night, everybody. God bless. Mm-hmm.